Hey guys, it's your girl Nosh. What's going on? What's up? What's up? What's up? Hope you guys are receiving this message um, and you are healthy, peaceful, you are healed, you are just basking in the divine glow as you are listening to this message. Um, before we start out, let's do what we do best. Lord, God, universe ancestors ma uh, ascended masters spirit guide spirit team i ask that you please help me transmute all negative energy that is sent to me whether i'm aware of it or not i'm uh, not aware of it whether i'm awake or when i'm sleeping i ask that you please help me transmute all negative energy all evil eye anyone sending anything harmful or ill towards me I ask that you please help me transmute it into positive energy that helps me heal myself and heal others, that helps me prosper and it helps other, uh, and I help others prosper. I ask that it brings me peace, prosperity, healing, love, light, and success. Most importantly, healing, patience, and, and more belief and faith in you, God. I ask that you please help me transmute all negative energy into getting closer to my destiny. I ask that you please help me transmute all negative energy, all evil eye, into positive energy that is helping me get towards my destiny and the things I need to fulfill by contract, by birthright, by purpose that the gods have created me to be here for. Thank you. Thank you, universe. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this universe. I am so grateful. I give so much gratitude. I give so much thanks. Thank you so much for helping me fight the fight that I need to fight. And thank you so much, God, for always being on my side. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Guys, remember, when you wake up in the morning, just remember to transmute your energy because you don't know what people are doing to you when you are sleeping. You don't know because I'm going to tell you something. The wicked don't sleep. Okay? I don't mean to turn this into a sermon or, or or I'm not trying to preach, but hey, it's something I do naturally and, and people listen and it moves. It makes moves. It, it moves the winds. It moves the elements. It moves when I speak. So let me say it one more time. God, I ask that you please help me transmute all negative energy, all ill will towards me. Anything that's malicious towards me, anyone trying to hurt my soul or trying to hurt me, I ask that you please help me transmute it into positive energy that I can use for myself and that I can help others with as well too. And God, I ask that you please make me so strong in you, so strong in you that I am tied to you and that tie, that knot is never, ever, ever undone, God, please. So... The reason why I'm telling you this, guys, is just like I said, the wicked don't sleep. Evil does not sleep. And I don't mean to say evil because I feel like I'm I'm insulting, not insulting the word. I'm giving the word evil credibility by saying this because the thing is, you have to understand, when you think you're doing good, um, people, you know, that you don't even talk to anymore, people that you thought you have left behind, they don't feel that way. They still think about what has been done. And unfortunately, they feel justified in doing what they're doing. And we all we all know this. We cannot change anyone's thinking. We cannot change anyone's perspective. The only thing we can do is pray for ourselves and protect ourselves. That is our given right, okay? To pray for ourselves and to protect ourselves. That's why this message is very clear and cut. And it's basically saying, protect yourself. When you think that, that no one is watching, that is when people are watching you, okay? When you think you're happy in life, and things are moving forward for you just remember there is going to be someone out there that doesn't want that for you whether you want to believe it or not that's up to you but i'm just telling you this basically when you go to sleep at night <coughs> do you lock your doors do you shut your windows or do you leave everything wide open no you don't right when you go to sleep at night, you shut your lights you lock the doors you shut the windows why do you do that to protect yourself right right and anybody disagree? I don't think so. So same thing. What you when you do um, when you protect yourself and you say prayers over yourself. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get into you with a couple of prayers that you can say for yourself that can help you out. Um, but I just want to put this out there. So what you're doing is you're protecting yourself. There is no need for you to lock the door. There is no need for you to shut your windows, right? Because you're sleeping. You live in a safe neighborhood. You're good, right? No one's going to bother you. Then why do you do that? When you leave your car in the parking lot, why do you lock your car? Why do you hit that alarm button? When you, when you leave a certain area that belongs to you, why do you put a key in the lock and why do you turn the lock and lock it? Why? To protect yourself. 
So you need to start locking yourself up, locking your energy up, locking the things up around you, locking your dreams up, you know, locking your thoughts up, locking your desires and your wish and your health and your success because people will try to rob you of it. And I'm telling you, I know you're, you're going to be like, no, Shane, you're making us paranoid. Honey, if I'm making you paranoid, good. Because you should be paranoid when it comes to the type of people that we live around, okay? And the people, the type of people that exist in the world. I'm going to tell you straight up, guys. There are certain individuals that legit, legit live. They feed off of attacking other people, okay? They have nothing else better to do or they have some type of vendetta against you that you may not even know about. You may think that you had a fallout with a friend, right? That you 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 basically were not aligned, right? You were not on the same frequency. You weren't you weren't thinking the same anymore. You weren't going towards the same goals anymore. So what did you do? Just like anybody does, you pulled your energy back, right? If you are no longer aligned with someone, it's just like when you're dating someone and you no longer have feelings for that person. Do you continue staying in that relationship? No, you break up. Friendships are the same way. They're just like breakups in a sense. They're just like relationships. So when you are no longer aligned with a certain individual anymore, either you pull yourself away or God, the universe spirit guides will basically pull you guys apart because you're not aligned anymore. And it happens. Let me get into that real quickly, so this way I can I can help you guys, especially the the individuals that are broken hearted and broken hearted, and you're listening to me. Please don't be broken hearted. Please don't be upset. Just understand that if you are no longer speaking to someone, you're no longer aligned with them. So whether it mean whether it means you're dating them or your family members with them, you're related to them, your friends your friends with them. If you are no longer talking to a person on a day to day basis. Or you're no longer in engaging with a person here and there. That means you're no longer aligned with them. Because you have to understand, spirit, God, and the universe, and your spirit team, and your ancestors can hear the secret conversations that go down when you're not around. Which kind of makes me think of that song. There's a billion dollars on the elevator when something, something. <laughs> like from that song, Flawless. Think about it for a second. When someone is speaking about you behind your back or or constructing something against you behind your back, spirit is listening. God is listening. Universe is listening. So I'll give you an example. Say you meet up with, with someone. Um, say 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 you so you start talking to a guy, right? You like him, he's attractive, he's really good, he's texting you every day, and this, this, and that. He's texting, he's texting you that good morning. God, I hate that. Please, oh my God. Texts you every morning. Good morning. Good night. Blah blah blah. Da 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 da. And then all of a sudden it's cricket, crickets. It's the 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 five of pentacles. Done. No more talking. Or eight of wands upside down. No more talking. You're not talking anymore. Either you're not you're not reaching out or they're not reaching out. And I know you're gonna be like, well, why aren't they reaching out to me? What are they doing? Why aren't they talking to me? Guys, instead of asking that question or, or trying to figure out or, or deduce what happened or dissect what happened, just understand that maybe you're not aligned to this person anymore or spirit heard you talking some nonsense about them or spirit heard them talking some nonsense about you, okay? So what spirit did was totally move you away from each other and you're no longer aligned this happens to, to a lot of us where we meet someone where we talk to them for a few minutes um and then we don't hear from them again because we're no longer aligned with them now unfortunately we have some people in this world and my heart goes out to these people and i pray over these people that please 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 get it together get it together these people don't understand when something is no longer aligned to you or to 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 whatever the, the case is with, when something is no longer aligned to you, you will no longer have it in your life. God will make it a point to separate it from you. Spirit will make it a point to separate it from you. And you just need to be okay with that. Understand that there was something good in that, that that's why it happened. God saw something or spirit saw something that this person was doing and it was not for your greatest and highest good. Or you were doing something. Let's not blame everything on other people. Let's take accountability too. We're all adults here. Maybe you said something or maybe you did something or maybe you're going down a path that is no longer aligned with that person. So yes, breakups do happen. People do move away. People do stop speaking to each other. It's all for the better of things. It's all for the benefit of each individual. But some people do not understand this. They take it so personal and they're like, oh, well, they're not talking to me and they're doing this and they're doing that and they're not reaching out to me. They left me behind. They no longer care about me and this, this and that. No, it has nothing to do with that. It is a simple frequency issue. 
you are no longer on the same frequency as another person. Hence, you're not going to be on the same level with them. You're not going to be in the same room with them anymore. Okay? And please, please, please try to wrap your heads around this. Because if you don't, you're only going to miss out on the things that the universe has for you. So let's say you're the type of individual, you stop talking to somebody, and now you're mad that you're not talking to them anymore. You're mad that this person isn't reaching out. You're mad and upset that this person is no longer talking to you. They cut you out of their life. They're no longer working with you. So now what you do is you start doing vengeful things. No, don't do that. Don't do that because you don't know who that person is. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what reason they have. And first of all, you don't know what spirit heard. In the midst of everybody sleeping and not listening, you don't know what spirit heard. Spirit can hear thoughts. Spirits know, spirit knows your feelings. Spirit knows what's going on in your head. Spirit knows exactly how you're feeling. So if you were against someone, you're going to be removed out of their life. If you were, you were um, not basically not helping this person grow towards the destiny that they have, you're not going to be in their life and it's okay. There is no need to do magic on them. There's no need to, to try to pull them back to you. There's no need to try to get them back in your life because it's not going to work out like that. Especially if you're dealing with an individual who is protected by the divine, someone who is protected by the spirit, someone who is protected by their ancestors is going to backfire. Okay, so first and foremost, if you have a broken heart and you're listening to me, be thankful for that broken heart. Number two, understand that your heart is really not broken. Your expectations broke. You had a certain expectation and you and, and whatever you were putting out there or whatever this person was putting out there did not meet your expectation. That's why there was the fallout. OK, the, the line that you were trying to make towards that person did not connect. So it did not happen. It's OK. If you sit there and you curse this individual out, if you throw magic at this person, if you throw spiritual attacks at this person, if you come at this person, it's only going to fire back. You know why? Because this person is no longer in alignment with you. Okay? It's like having that phone call. You're on the phone with a person and the phone disconnects because it's no longer connected. You're no longer in connection with someone. That's why this happens. And to do all of these malicious things to someone, not that I'm saying you're doing it, but we do have people that listen to me that I don't know of might be listening that do do these things because I'm saying it for a reason. Do not resort to that level because it's only going to backfire at some point in time. Karma is very real, especially right now in 2024. Okay, so if someone is sending you evil eye, say you have a friend that every time you do something um, successful, they send you evil eye. At one point in time when they're no longer in alignment with you, meaning God, the universe will send people into your life in order for you to evolve. Doesn't matter the cost of that evolving or the cost of what happens, everybody is a catalyst that enters into your life. I'm a catalyst right now, um, basically telling you this so you can learn from it and you can evolve and you can move forward. We all are catalysts in each other's lives, okay? We're all at, basically in each other's lives to help each other grow and, and, and evolve and learn things about ourselves and learn things about this world, learn things about the spiritual journey because we're all on a certain journey. Nobody's journey is the same. OK, sometimes you connect like, you know, the train connects at the same at, at, at some point on the tracks and then it goes the other way. Like and then the connection parts, the train tracks part. That's how life works. And that's how connections work. There, it's really sad that you would sit there and think that just because you're not talking to someone, you have to get back to, back at them or you have to try to connect with them. If you connect with them organically, that's fine. But if you can reach out to this person and they don't want to connect with you, that's fine. Leave them alone. You're only going to be blocking your blessings. You're only going to block what's coming towards you, okay? <clears throat> now, now, the thing that you need to understand is when you're no longer in alignment with someone, you will feel it. You will no longer speak to this person anymore. You will no longer be around this person anymore. So you can live in the same building across from this person's apartment. You live and they live right across from you. When you're no longer aligned, universe will make it a point that when they leave to go to work, you will be leaving 10 minutes earlier. Or when they when they need to go do something, spirit will hold you back and let them go so you, you don't have to see them. I'm telling you guys, like you can live in the same town and you will never run into each other if you're no longer aligned. Please hear me when I say this. 
Like, you could legit, like, plan it out. Like, I'm going to walk down the street, and I know at this at 6.05, this person comes around this corner, and I'm going to run into them. Guess what? You do that, and you still don't run into the person because you know what happens? That person on the other line, right, that person either leaves their wallet somewhere and they have to go back and grab it, They're, they get stuck in traffic, or something happens, they, they drop something, they have to bend down and get it and pick it up, and then they can't find it and blah, blah, blah. Bam, you miss the time. Where you thought you orchestrated it. Oh, I'm going to meet this person at 605 when they come around the corner. And guess what? If they're not aligned with you, you will not meet them. When you're not aligned with someone, you won't even meet them on a dead end street. It's all about alignment. It's all about being on the same frequency. You could be on the same frequency with someone for five minutes. And then after that five minutes, when universe does what it needs to do, that person carries out whatever they needed to carry out. You're no longer in alignment with them. You won't ever see that person again. You ever traveled on a plane, had a wonderful conversation with the, with the passenger sitting next to you. And then once you get off the plane, you guys never see each other again. It's like that type of shit. Okay. And even if you exchange phone numbers, you get so busy in life, you don't reach out to each other. You're no longer in alignment with each other. If you come in contact with someone and you share information with them and you receive information from them, and then after that you turn around and think, oh, it's been three years. I haven't talked to Sally in like three years after that wonderful conversation we had on the phone for three years. For three hours we were on the phone discussing this, discussing that, and now I don't even talk to Sally anymore. You know why you don't talk to Sally anymore? Because you're no longer in alignment with her. Okay, you were, say you were dating your, your neighbor for a while and every day you came out and it was so cute. You saw him and you're like, hee hee, hi, how's it going? And now all of a sudden you're not in alignment with them anymore. You won't see your neighbor anymore. You won't, you won't. You'll have either have a fallout or something will happen. And now let's talk about fallouts. When something is going, you know, something is going great, something's going good. And then all of a sudden an argument happens and you fall out with the person. You're no longer aligned with them. You're not on the same frequency anymore. But unfortunately, the point I'm trying to make is you could be or someone or maybe I'm talking about someone around you because, you know, this goes both ways. It could be either you or someone around you may be upset at that because let's let's face it. People do not want to accept the word of the universe. People don't want to accept that the universe runs things. We don't really run shit. It's the universe that runs it, okay? The universe is the biggest creator of everything. Every thought, every every step that you take, every movement that you make with your body, every thought that you create in your mind, it's already been constructed, uh, orchestrated and constructed and designed by the universe. When the universe feels like you are no longer in need of learning your lesson anymore, it will pick you up and it will move you somewhere else but if you refuse to move i'm seeing the tower card in my head if you refuse to move and refuse to stop what you're doing the universe will make it a point to bring a tower moment you know we talk about tower moments tower moments are nothing to be afraid of of course tower moments are something to be afraid of if you are refusing to let go of something when a tower moment happens it's basically a sudden cause in events a sudden change a sudden disruption in the frequency you know why because the universe does not want you to be there anymore if you do not leave on your own accord the universe will move you okay so if you are in a relationship that is toxic and abusive and you refuse to leave that relationship you refuse to adhere what the universe is saying the universe will make it a point to construct events that will cause you to leave that relationship alone it will either harm you in a sense well it'll make you sick where you can't see that person anymore or it will cause a, some type of friction to happen or it will cause a point where maybe this person just has to pick up and move or maybe this person gets so abusive towards you that you have no 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 other choice but to call the cops and get this person locked up you have to complain or it'll do something to you like like injure you so badly that you have no choice but to wake up and see that this person is abusive and toxic because all along Prior to that, two, three years before, universe is telling you, stop it. Stop it, Karen. You can't be here no more. Stop it, Karen. You need to leave. But Karen's like, no, I love him. Oh, I love him so much. I can't leave. And universe is like, oh, my God. Seriously? You're really going to be that stubborn about it? All right, fine. What are we going to do to her? What are we going to do to her? We're going to make her so uncomfortable that she has no choice to move. This is how the universe works, guys. So I always suggest when you start getting inklings that you're not supposed to be somewhere, just move because you don't want the universe moving you because if the universe moves you, it is going to be painful and is going to hurt. The universe will make it a point to shock you so bad that you will never get over it.
because that's what the universe is trying to teach you. Everybody that comes into your life is a lesson and, 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 it's, and you have to learn that lesson. If you don't learn that lesson, the universe will make it a point to help you learn that lesson. And like I say all the time, guys, you, you don't want universe to step in. I know you guys look at the universe like, oh, the universe is so beautiful. Oh, it loves me so much. It's merciless. It, it watches over me. Yes, it does. It does. But it's also like a strict parent at the same time. You ever had a parent that is so loving? So loving. But when you skip school or when you get bad grades or when you find out, when your parent finds out you're doing something you're not supposed to do, especially if it's harmful towards you, they will step in and they will get serious. They will get strong with you. They will they will get rough with you. You know what I mean? They will tell you. Now, look, I told you not to sneak out last night. I told you you were grounded. Since you don't want to listen, now you're grounded for the rest of the fucking summer. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but that's the type of parents I had. If I fucked up, I would get grounded. I wasn't allowed to have my phone. I was, I was about 17, 18 years old. I remember I came home late one night, and my mother had given me a curfew for 10 o'clock. I came home at 11.30. Boo, she didn't say anything. I, she made me think everything was fine. I went to bed. I woke up in the morning. Guess what? My keys were gone, and my cell phone was gone. She took it. She took it. And I said to her, where are my keys, Mom? I need to, like, you know, go to work or whatever. Um, and where's my cell phone? She goes, no, I will drive you to work. And um, if you need me, if you need me to pick you up, I know your schedule. I'll pick you up. And she goes, I don't think you need your cell phone because you're going to be at work. You're going to be busy working. What do you need your phone for? And I'm like, why are you doing this? And she's like, you were supposed to come home at 10 last night. You came home at 1130. She goes, I didn't say anything last night because I wanted you to sleep. But I'm telling you this morning, you're cut off. You're not allowed to go anywhere. No more keys for your car and no more cell phone. Okay. And I'm like, oh, come on. Seriously. But she made herself clear because guess who was coming home at 9.50 after that? Whenever I, when I was out of being grounded, my ass was home at 9.50. My car was in the driveway, 9.55. I wouldn't even let it strike 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, I'd be in my room. Why? Because she made a point. She made a point. So this is what the universe does. I'm not saying the universe grounds you in a sense. It kind of does. Like, it, it'll stop you. That's right. Like sometimes when you want to go meet someone and you get a flat tire, that's the universe intervening and saying, no, you do not need to go there. Or when you're on your way to a date and you're really not supposed to be going on a date with this person. The universe is going to do something, either put a hole in your clothing. So now you got to change your whole attire, either break a bracelet, break a necklace. Now you're like, oh, shit, breaking, breaking of things, especially jewelry, necklaces, stuff like that is not is not a good sign. It's not a good omen. Getting a flat tire is not a good omen. Your car breaking down when you're on your way to meet someone is not a good omen, okay? I'll tell you a quick story. I knew a girl. She was uh, going on a date. And um, she, while she was getting dressed, she was telling me, I really don't want to go out with this person. He's not even my type. But you know what? It's a free meal. It's a free meal. He'll buy me something to eat. And, you know, I'll, I'll go out because I've been bored all weekend. I haven't had anything to do. And I said to her, I said, I don't think you should go. Why don't you just cancel with him and tell him you don't want to meet up with him? Nope. She said she wanted to go, and she's getting ready. She's asking me, you know, what, what, like, I, I was out actually over her house, and um, she was helping me. She was, I was, I was helping her pick out an outfit to go, and she's like, should I wear these? Should I wear that? And I said, yeah, those are fine. Those are comfortable. And as she's doing her makeup, she's legit. Like, I don't really like this guy. I don't like what he said to me, or I don't know. I don't like this about him. And I'm like, then why are you going out with him? Oh, because I have nothing else to do. I'm bored. And I'm like, we could hang out and we could do something. No, I'd rather go out and I, I'd rather, you know, like, we'll get something to eat. And it'll be fun for me. It'll be an adventure. All right. And she goes on the date. She comes back. She calls me up. And she goes, hey. I was like, what's up? So how did your date go? She goes, it was horrible. I didn't like him. She goes, I did not like him at all. And he was not a gentleman at all. And I was like, wow, what happened? She goes, we went to go see the falls, right? So part of their date was to go get food and then go to the falls, or I think it was vice versa. She goes, we went to the falls to see see the waterfall. She goes, and there was this bridge that um we were supposed to get on in order to see the fall. And I'm like, uh-huh. And she's like, well, while getting on the bridge, she goes, I didn't wear the right shoes. I'm like, okay, what happened? And she's like, I lost my shoe. She's like, my shoe fell into the fall. She goes, my Birkin, my Birkin sock fell into the fall. And I'm like, bro, what? And she's like, yeah. She's like, my $100 Birkin or whatever, how much it costs. She's like, it fell into the fall. And she's like, and he wasn't even a gentleman about it where he didn't even offer me shoes. He had on flip-flops, but he didn't even say, hey, you can wear my flip-flop. She's like, he did carry me to the car. She goes, but it was embarrassing that my shoe fell into the fall. And I said, girlfriend, what if you would have fell into the falls? 
I was like, you got the telltale signs of not to go out with this person. God, the universe told you, you felt uncomfortable when you were getting dressed. I said, I saw it in your face and you kept telling me, I don't want to go with him. I don't want to do this. I said, next time you feel like that, don't go with this person or don't go with anybody when you feel that way. When you feel uncomfortable about doing something, that is the universe explaining to you, let's not do this. It's like a warning sign. Like, you know when you're about to run out of gas and you get the empty sign in, on, in your car and your dashboard? That's what that is. When you feel uncomfortable about something, that is legit the universe telling you, child, I don't see this going anywhere. This person is not good for you. This person is not aligned for you. Don't deal with them, okay? Do, do not deal with them. I'll give you another example. You're, you're friends with somebody and everything is good, blah, 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 and now all of a sudden you get fired. Now, all of a sudden, you're starting to have car problems. Now, all of a sudden, your parents are threatening to kick you out or your spouse is threatening to kick you out. Your kids are not listening to you. You're having legal issues. You're, all these issues are popping up. All because you all this all happened when a certain individual came into your life and you started being friends. Um, you need to double check on your friendship circle and you need to get rid of that person. You, you, this is where it's very good to remember things and keep a pattern in your head, you know, because your patterns will help you remember shit. Like you could be like, oh, so in February, I met such and such. In February, I met Karen. After I met Karen in February, I had a job where I was working at for seven years and all of a sudden I lost that job. Yeah, get rid of Karen. Oh, in February, I met Karen and, and me and my spouse was together. Um, and now we're going through a divorce. Yeah, get rid of Karen. Get rid of her. Get rid of her and let it go. Now, in some cases, these people are catalysts for you. I think in all cases, these people are catalysts for you to help you remember where you need to be pivoted, where you need to be aligned. So, but going back to what I was saying is a lot of times when you move away from someone, people don't see that you're no longer aligned to them because they're not that spiritually evolved to understand that. And what they do is they attack you. They attack you in a sense they talk shit about you. Right? They go around their friends and say, well, she thinks she's better than me now. That's why she don't talk to me. Oh, she doing her business. That's why she's so busy. She don't talk to me. You know what? It's okay if that happens. We are allowed to grow and we're allowed to evolve. We don't need to stay where we are. We don't need to keep being friends with the people that we are because we're going to meet so many different individual individuals in our lifetime. And we need to understand that. So, but there are some people, I know a few individuals, I've spoken to some individuals who have had this, the issue where when they walk away from someone, they're done with them, but that person isn't done with them. Now, when I say they're done with them and that person isn't done with them, it's simple where you don't want to talk to this person anymore, but now you're seeing that this person is throwing spiritual attacks at you, right? You're thinking about this person out of the blue. You know, when, when like, it, it's basically that person is vengeful that you walked away from them. And I really want to shed light on this. There is no need to be vengeful about anyone walking away from anyone. You're just no longer aligned. You're not aligned anymore. Like, I don't understand how much more I can say it for these thick ass headed motherfuckers to understand it. For these stubborn ass people to understand it. When something is not aligned with you anymore, let it the fuck go. Because the only thing you're doing is you're blocking yourself. Yeah, you're going to disrupt that person for a little bit. But the divine is going to come in. Because the divine don't play favorites. We are all the divine's kids. Okay, we all belong to the universe. Whether you want to believe it or not. Whether you believe in the universe or not. The universe believes in you. So whether or not the case is you're the one throwing magic or you're not the one throwing magic, the universe is still going to intervene and help its children. That's why it's not, it's not good to do this. What you do on your own accords, that's, that's your issue. What you choose to do with your own free will, it's, it's your problem, it's your issue. But I'm going to tell you this one thing, my friend. Be careful what you do because the universe is always watching. Okay, we are the universe and the universe is us. So every decision that we make, every step that we take, the universe is involved in it. So if you sit there and you are sitting there throwing spiritual attacks at someone or you're, or you're throwing magic at someone or you're trying to manifest someone and that person is no longer in alignment with you, it's only going to backfire. Yeah, like I said, you'll disrupt this person for a little bit, but the universe will intervene to save you and that person. 
okay the universe doesn't only save one person when something's going on in a situation the universe is basically there to to construct a design where it saves both of you when you got two people blocking each other, right? Like blocking each other's blessing. That's why you, the universe separates both of you. The universe is looking out for you and your enemy. Because that person may be your enemy, but it's still the universe's child. We're all children of the universe. We're all on a spiritual journey. We're all being helped by the universe. And the universe will constantly just step in and intervene and try to show you. But if you don't understand... The universe is not going to give up on you. If you continue bothering someone, you continue throwing attacks on them. The universe is just going to keep showing you that it's not working. That all your efforts are going in vain and you really need to start focusing on yourself and let it go. And worry about something else because you're no longer aligned here anymore. So, in speaking of people and enemies and blah, blah, blah. So, if you feel like someone is throwing spiritual attacks at you. Because you are no longer in alignment with them or you are no longer speaking to them and say like you just kind of like you you know better than I do who's spiritually attacking you guys. You know better than I know that than I do who's sending evil eye to you. The only thing I can give you the only remedy the only medicine I can give you about evil eyeing is is basically read Psalm 70. In your Bible, if you're a Christian, or you don't even have to be Christian because the word of God is the word of God. It's a decree. When you speak it over you, it works, okay? You don't have to be Christian. You don't have to be religious. You, you don't even, you don't have to do none of that. You just have to speak the words because words are spells. Once you speak them, you're casting them, okay? So all you got to do is before the sunrise, before the sun rises, after 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 the sun goes down preferably closer to between nine and ten o'clock at night before the sun comes up say psalm 73 times okay three times if you can and then when you are awake in the morning say it one more time so once you wake up in the morning say psalm 70 but at night after nine o'clock before you go to bed preferably preferably after nine before the sun comes up so, like, say you wake up in, in the middle of the night at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Say Psalm 70 three times. Or if you're about to go to bed, I, I personally encourage people to pray before they go to bed. I'm old school like that. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to be, like, anything like that. You know, you don't even have to believe in God, but you're praying over yourself. because what You know what prayer is? It's locking yourself from anything evil coming at you. Just like I had said earlier in this video, when you go to sleep at night, you lock your doors and you lock your windows and you lock your car. It's the same thing. You're locking your body. You're locking your spirit. You're locking your soul. You're locking your energy. So even if you want to pray over yourself or even speak over yourself, we're not even going to use the word prayer because some people just be too sensitive about that. Just speak over yourself. I am protected by the divine light. I am protected by my ancestors. I am protected by my spirit guides. I am protected by the highest power, whoever it may be or whatever it may be. Just say that before you go to bed, guys. Please. I'm in it for your safety. I'm in it for your growth. I want you to evolve. I want you to become exactly what your birthright has called you to become. But there are people out there that don't want that to happen. We call that the resistance, okay? Like I said, I'm part of the, the, the Alliance, the Ascension team, right? Remember World of Warcraft, Alliance, right? There was the Alliance and then I forgot what the other guys were. But this is the resistance that will come in. The resistance team does not want you to evolve. Resistance does not want you to ascend. And unfortunately, when we are born, we pick the contract of whose side we want to be on. Some people are legit born into this world or into this realm to become resistance. Okay, and resistance is to stop you from ascending. Some of us are born into this world, into this earth, to be a part of that ascension team. It's basically part of our birthright. I know from, from the get-go as I was a kid, because I always loved God, I always loved the universe, I always wanted to be a part of the light. I always, That was something that was always in me. It's in my nature to do good and to pray, right? Or to, to speak good over people. <laughs> I said the word prayer again, uh-oh. But, and, but there, at the same time, if I'm born like that, there is darkness that's born at the same time too. There is a person that's born in resistance that is there to stop me from helping. Okay, like you know what we say, new levels, new devils. Every time you evolve, there will be someone there to stop you from evolving. 
okay whether you like to believe it or not you can you can sit in your house and you can think yeah nobody nobody's attacking me nobody's saying nothing about me you don't know that you don't know that and maybe the reason why you're not feeling that and you're not seeing that is because you're so divinely protected that anytime anything comes towards you it gets it gets basically turned around and sent back to uh, return to center sender okay so please 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 utilize psalm 70 please 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 pray over yourself when you go to sleep at night excuse me speak over yourself words of of protection when you sleep at night over your children over your loved ones over your house over your over your materialistic things because the devil is not tired evilness i mean and you know what i can't even say the devil because i feel like the devil don't even fucking care he's like in his in his own world doing his own thing i feel like wicked people people who are evil by nature people who feel justified in causing other pain they don't sleep at night guys it could be years down the line and they will still try to attack you. It could be centuries down the line and they will reincarnate into your life to stop you again. Some of you have past life people that are in this lifetime still trying to stop you from getting to that, that position, from getting to that place, from getting to that ending which was written out for you centuries and centuries and millennials and eons ago. Probably when you were first created, you were supposed to complete this mission and this task. But because of your enemy that was also born with you in that lifetime has tried to stop you. These people are past life stalkers. These people are spiritual stalkers. They follow you in every single lifetime to stop you. Don't let them stop you. Grab onto the universe's uh to, to the universe's uh jacket. There, the the grab onto the universe's shawl. Grab onto God's God's shawl, God's God's garment, and hold on tight, okay? Because I tell you, evil does not sleep. It doesn't sleep a wink. And I'm gonna tell you something else. When you're a good person, and when you're when you're a good person, and you're given the opportunity to be evil, you won't do it. But when someone is evil and they're given the opportunity to be evil, best believe they will do it because it's in their nature. And it's something simple like say you break up with your ex-boyfriend um, and, and you're, you're in his house, you're moving your, your stuff out. You know, a person with evil intentions will go and throw bleach on all of his clothes. A person with good intentions will just leave quietly. You have to figure out who you are and then from there walk the path that you need to walk, okay? No one is... No one is telling you, no one is forcing you to walk into the light. If this, if the light is where you want to walk, the light will embrace you. But if the light is not where you want to walk, you can walk wherever you go, wherever you want to walk. Just remember that that's the path you're choosing. No one is going to blame you or, 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 or what's the words? Uh, what's the word I want to use, Kat? Um, no one is going to condemn you for the path that you're choosing. But just remember the path that you choose is the path that you choose and be prepared for the consequences that come with the path that you choose so you could sit there and choose to throw attacks at people you could choose to to get revenge you could choose to be evil but there are consequences it's called karma okay and no one is exempted from karma there's a lot of people that are out there think that they're exempt from karma because what they're doing is justified. That's the problem. What you may think is justified in God's eyes, the universe's eyes, it may not be justified. It may have been a lesson. Maybe you needed to meet this person and this person needed to teach you a lesson. Or maybe it is your own karma that's coming back to you in the form of this person that you're feeling you're so justified to take revenge on. That's why I leave it up to the, the universe to take revenge, to be, to, to be the best advocate. You want the best advocate for you. You want the best lawyer, the best judge. Call the universe. Tell the universe to do what you need to do. You do not need to go into the kitchen and start working on some herbs and stuff. You do not need to grab no rusty nails and throw them in jars and stuff to get back at people. You don't need to do none of that. Let the universe take care of it. The only thing you need to do is keep your protection up. Keep your armor up of protection. Lock your houses, lock your cars, lock your doors, lock your soul, lock your energy. Do not give access to anybody that you are uncomfortable with, okay? Especially with to anybody that you are not aligned with anymore. And on that note, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope this helps. Guys, we're all here to help each other. When we all realize that, all of this jealousy, all of this hate, 
all of this revenge, this vengeance, it will all dissipate once we realize that we're all lessons for each other. No one comes into our life to break us apart. They come into our life to teach us a lesson so we can break apart to be built back stronger. Okay, so forgive your enemy. Let it go. Forgive that person that broke your heart. Because remember, they didn't break your heart. They just broke your expectation. And it's your fault you had an expectation tied to what it is that you were expecting. Okay, take accountability. Be responsible for yourself. And most importantly, please protect yourself. Because evil don't sleep. It be doing discos in the middle of the night while you're sleeping. Okay, so guys, remember that. I love you. Take care and enjoy yourselves. Bye.